Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first, the last, our creator and our sustainer and the one who we worship and worship alone and we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger sent to humanity. O oh, you who believe have taqwa of Allah. One of the meanings of taqwa is to be conscious of Allah. Not just openly when everybody is looking, but also secretly when nobody is there. And do not die except in a state of submission to Allah, except in a state of Islam. <clears throat> Elon Musk is the 83rd richest person in the world. He is the inventor of Tesla Motors, the, the electric cars. And believe me, before I drove up here, I paid about $50 to fill up, so I kind of wish I had a Tesla at that time. But he also founded SpaceX, and he is not only successful in business, but he also tries to give back and, and come up with solutions which will help the environment. Evan Spiegel is one of the co-founders of the social media platform Snapchat. Now, if you don't know what Snapchat is, ask your kids. But he founded this 
uh, this platform when he was an undergrad. There was a project that he had in his university. So him and his friends came up with this. And now, as they say, the rest is history, millions of viewers. And he is also worth millions of dollars. If we go to the bookshelves in this masjid or any other masjid, we will find almost certainly the books of Imam Nawawi. Almost certainly you'll find Riyadh al-Salihin, the Garden of the Gnostics. Imam Nawawi died when he was only 45 years old, but if you go anywhere in the world, whether they speak Arabic, whether they don't speak Arabic, anywhere in the Muslim world, you will find his books. So what is my purpose of giving you these three examples? First of all, in no way am I comparing Imam Nawawi's Islamic scholarship to the other two. But the point I'm making is that whether it was technology, or whether it was business, or whether it's Islamic scholarship, all the people I mentioned were not like anybody else. They were all extraordinary. They were anything but ordinary. They were different. And today, I will prove to you, to the Quran and the Sunnah, that being different most of the time is exactly where we want to be. That is exactly who we want to be. Start with a hadith that many of us have heard. The Prophet ﷺ said, بَدَى الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيُعُودُ كَمَا بَدَى غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى The Prophet ﷺ said, Islam began as something strange, something different. Islam came at a time when people did not get their rights. Islam came at a time when oppression was rampant. Islam came at a time when people were oppressed. And so here comes Islam in this as a beacon of light amongst all this darkness. So if you followed Islam at that time, then you were not like everybody else. You were different and you stood out and it was difficult. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it will return to being strange like it began. How do we feel today? We feel strange. People try to make us like we're outcasts. Like you're not like everybody else, like you don't belong. Exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said would happen. But then what does he say? He says, فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى Glad tidings, success to those who are the strangers, those who are different, those who are not like everybody else. So this hadith tells us many things. One of the things it's telling us is what? That don't think like everybody else. That you don't just follow the crowd like everybody. You know, like a bunch of sheep. If you push sheep in one direction, all the sheep follow. If you push them in another direction, they all follow. And that's not how we want to be. Not in this life, and of course not in the next life. When we were growing up, when we wanted to like go out with our friends, or we wanted to go watch something, our parents used to tell us, well, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff too? This is what they used to tell Now, just a warning, make sure, be careful you know who your kids are. Because one of my cousins, his parents used to tell him this. He tried telling it to his daughter. And his daughter said, well, depends. Are they going bungee jumping? So make sure you know who your kids are. But the general point they were making was what? That you have to think for yourself. So what if everybody else is doing it? That doesn't mean that you have to go and do it and follow it and just be and, and copy and be like them. That's not what we want. You don't want to be average. You don't want to just go with the flow. You want to use your mind. You want to use your intellect. And this is what we were trying to be told. Because if you don't do that, and you do just go with the flow, then other people will make the decisions for you. And we say this, perhaps the greatest place that we see this is in the news. Now some of us actually think that the news is there to inform us. When in fact it is not. The, the news is there to get ratings, and the news is there to entertain people. This is not like 50 years ago where there was like one anchor who used to come with a half an hour news. Now it's 24 hours, so that means you have to keep competing. You have to keep competing. And so you feed people what to think. To the point that you don't even know what the facts are. This is why Malcolm X used to say that if you're not careful, the newspapers will have you loving the oppressors and hating the oppressed. Because you're not thinking for yourself. You don't follow what anybody, or you just follow what everybody else is saying. One of the places that we see this is when it comes to the Middle East. When it comes to what's known as modern day Sham, which is uh, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, and these areas, what, when you ask the average person what do they think, what are they going to tell you? Do they have something positive to say? Do they even know what's going on? No. 
Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina. That praise be the one who sent his servant, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on this night journey and bless the land around it, which is this area. But if we look at what's happening, nobody even knows. Nobody even knows who the oppressors are. Nobody knows who's being oppressed. Nobody even cares what's happening in many parts. Why? Because we just think like everybody else. And the solutions are only going to come when we are different and don't think like everybody else. Now let's get deeper into this. What does the Quran say when it comes to being like most people or being like everybody else? Well, let's let's see. First of all, when it comes to knowledge. When it comes to knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ghalibun ala amrihi. Walakinna akthar an nasi la ya'lamu. Allah is dominant over his command, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa'alun lima yasha. He does whatever he wants, whenever he of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, they don't. We used to, when the Muslim world actually used to be creative and used to invent things and used to give more to society, we used to see that when we discovered something, it was not to make us feel superior. We would look at the creator, not at the creation. So it would increase us in actually knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what happens? Now people look at the creation and don't look at the creator and forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do we want to be like most people? Is this how we want to be? Most people that don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is what Allah is telling us. And there are many, many examples where Allah says most people do not know. Most people are ignorant. Most people are unaware. Over and over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this. Our knowledge in general, what is it? How much is it? If I take somebody who's the top of their craft, like give me the top cancer specialist. How much do we know about cancer? What's he going to say? Uh, we know, you know, 2% maybe. We're still learning. We're making many discoveries every day. They'll say something today and then two years from now it'll be completely different. So we don't know anything in general. So for us to think that we know so much is pretty foolish. So we don't want to be like most people that think they know everything. We want to be those who know that Allah knows everything and we humble ourselves. What else does Allah say when it comes to following people? Allah says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you follow most people on the earth, they will lead you astray. Do you want to be like most people? Do you want your kids to speak like most of their classmates? Do you want them to act like the way many of their classmates do? Is this what we want to do? Do most people, forget about just being Muslim, do most people have a belief in God nowadays? Not the people I grew up with. It was just all by name. Is that who we want to be like? Because if you're following those people, they're going to lead you astray from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're going to tell you, just do whatever you want if it feels good. Do whatever, whatever makes you happy. Who cares about your family? Who cares about your obligations? As long as you're happy. This is what they teach us. I'm studying counseling. This is what they teach us. That it's all about whatever your client wants. It's not about anything else. You can't impose anything on them. So whatever makes them happy, makes them happy. And if you follow that way, if you follow your desires, we know what's going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us Jannah if we say no to our desires. So is this what we want to be like? This is what most people are like. That's not what we want to be like. What else? When it comes to being thankful. Shaytan made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said he will come and surround the human being from every angle. And what did he say? وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ You're going to see a pattern here. You will not find most people to be thankful. You want to be like most people? In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another portion, he emphasizes when he says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشُّكُورِ Very few of my servants are thankful. One time, uh, Umar radiallahu an, he was passing by a man and this man was making uh, uh, dua. اللَّهُمَّ اجْعَلْنِي مِنَ الْقَلِيلِ Allah, make me from those who are from the minority. Make me from those who are just, you know, from the few. And he said, what kind of dua is this? And then he repeated this verse to him. 
وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشُّكُورِ Very few of my servants are thankful. So make me from the thankful. And are most people thankful? No matter what we have. Some people are so busy and concerned with what they don't have, they forget to enjoy what they actually have. So we don't want to be with the majority in this, in this case. Right? Even Mark Twain used to say, he said, when you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to ponder and, and reflect. Like something's wrong. What else? Now let's get a little bit deeper. When it comes to the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The Day of Judgment is coming and it is coming without doubt. But most people don't believe. Most people, if we go ask them right now, forget about asking, look at their actions. The, the heads of the companies, people work for them for 30 years. And then they were involved in a scandal and it's all wiped out now. Do they care? They walk away with their $100 million compensation package. Do they care about who worked with them? No, they don't. Do, are most, do most people care when, they, when they're looking to get a job? Do they say, okay, is this good for me? Is this good for my family? Should I look into it? They don't care. It's just whatever. They don't look into it deeply. I'll just take whatever I can get. That's what most people are doing because they're not consciously aware that they have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody has to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But is that what most people are doing? That's not what most people are doing. And then when it comes to general belief itself in anything. Allah, what, Allah says that what he sent is the truth. The Quran is the truth. Paradise is the truth. The hellfire is the truth. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day of judgment is the truth. But most people do not believe. Most people do not believe. The new atheism that is spreading. People with no beliefs whatsoever. People mocking those that believe. Our society is not just anti-Islamic. It's anti-belief in general. And this is nothing new. This is how it's been, you know, for a very long time. Even when I was younger, this is how it was. It's just worse now. So this is what most people are. So is this what we want to be like, like most people? Not having a purpose in our life? And I've given you five examples. There are many, many more examples. So when you look in the Quran, and we all should look and ponder, look when it says most people, look when it says most of them, and what will you find after it? You will find after them, yajhalun, that they are ignorant. La yaqilun, that they don't use their intellect. La ya'lamun, that people don't know. La yu'minun, that they don't believe. This is what you're going to find. So in these cases, we want to be from the minority. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the minority, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who stand up for his deen in a time when it is difficult to do so. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, in the condition that we are in, in the present state that we're in, especially coming up now on about two weeks or so, when things are going to change a little bit, if we don't embrace being from the minority and know who we are, then we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle. You know, just this past week, I was in Canada. I was going through the, the customs. And so I got in there, and, and they asked me, said, what are you here for? I said, I'm here for business. So what kind of business? I said, it's a conference. OK, so the first guy let me go. Then I went to the other window. And he said, what are you here for? I said, oh, I'm here for business. And he said, what kind of business? I said, a conference. He said, OK, what kind of conference? I said, oh, it's a... Uh, it's an Islamic conference. Excuse me, what did you say? I can just imagine people behind me, you know, kind of, oh my God, what did he say? It's an Islamic conference, I said to him. He said, okay, um, and so you're just coming? I said, yeah, I'm a speaker here. He said, okay, do you have a uh, letter of invitation? I didn't have a letter of invitation. He said, okay, do you have something, some of a schedule that says what you're doing? I, so I showed him the schedule. So then he says to me, he says, okay, off the record, what does your community feel about the current elections and what's happening, meaning us Muslims in America. And I said, you know, nobody, most people aren't really excited about it, but, you know, we'll deal with it. In our city in San Antonio, we have pretty good outreach, alhamdulillah. 
But I said, we'll deal with it. And then he looked down at the papers and he said, you're from Texas, right? I said, yes. And he says, God be with you. And he stamped my thing and he said, you keep going. So people are concerned, right? And, the, and then when I was there, people would be like, yeah, you need to move here. Well, it's cold over there. I'm not going to move over there. But it is an opportunity for us. So we embrace being from the minority. If we don't see it as an opportunity, then we're going to crumble and we're going to fall apart. And we're not going to be able to stand up and we will just wither away. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the value of this, of this religion. And guess what he says again? He says, This is the religion which is straight, which is true. This is the religion which will give you success not just in the next life, but in this life. But most people don't know that. Most people don't know. Some people are going to try to hide their Islam, failing to realize that people will respect you more the more open you are about your beliefs. You tell people, I have a service on Friday. Now, of course, you have to use wisdom and understand. You tell people, I have a service on Friday. I'll be gone from 12 to 3 or whatever it is. You don't tell, go to your boss and say, I need a three-hour lunch on Friday. Well, so does everybody else, right? You have to use some wisdom. But they will respect you more. They may even be curious and ask you questions. So during this time that's coming, and may Allah make it easy for us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us steadfastness. But most people are not going to do that. So we don't want to be like most people. Now, we are not saying to be different just for the sake of being different. That is not the point here. Uh, that's what some people do to get notoriety or something. That's not the point. The reason we're saying to be different is because you have something which has more value. You have something which is better. That's why you want to be different. You don't just want to be different and say, oh, I'm a Muslim and I'm different. Well, that's foolish. You're saying it because you have something to give. And this is true in any craft that you can find. When your kids are learning, you want them to go. Do you want them to go to the teacher that's like everybody else? No, you want them to go to the best teacher. If you, have, if you have to get a surgery, do you want to go to the average surgeon? No, you want to go to who? You want to go to the best of surgeons. You want to go to the people who are not like everybody else. You want the architect who's not like everybody else. Because it's a sign that they are above and they are greater than everybody else. That is what we want. So that's why we're saying it. We're not just saying it for the sake of being different. So this is a responsibility we have. And inshallah, we are uh, up to that challenge. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make this easy for us as we come across uh, you know, the next couple of weeks and this transition that we're in. And I just want to share one ayah very quickly as many students here will be going back to school. And when you go to school, what do they say? You're, there's a lot of peer pressure and peer pressure is what? Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it, so why don't you do it? This is what you're going to hear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a very vivid description in the Qur'an about the people of Jannah. When the people of Jannah are relaxing, they're just sitting there having a good time. All of a sudden, one of them will say, قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينٌ One of them will say, I used to have a companion in the dunya, in this world, but I don't see him here. يَقُولُ وَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا إِنَّا لَمَدِينُونَ This person used to say, you believe in all this Islam stuff? Come on, we're really going to die and be resurrected? We're just going to become dirt. You know, all this stuff we hear now, people were saying it hundreds of years ago. This is what his friend used to say. And then he will say to these other people of Jannah, do you want to see him? فَاطَّلَعَ فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِينَ So what's going to happen? This was his friend. He said, Qareen. This was his close friend, right? And a window will open up. As this person is in paradise, a window opens up into the hellfire and he looks down and he sees this friend. Or she sees this friend. قَالَتَ اللَّهِ إِن كِتَّ لَتُرْدِينَ وَلَوْ لَا نِعْمَةُ رَبِّي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُحْضَرِينَ And then they use this verb kada in Arabic. Kada in Arabic means to have just missed doing something. So this person who's saved, who's in paradise, will look down at the friend who you, they used to hang out with, but then distance themselves from, and they will say, I was this close to being with them down there. But if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and his mercy. Look at the humbleness of the believer, not because we're so great. If it wasn't for the blessing of Allah, I would have been exactly where that person is. But Allah saved me from it. So all of the things that are cool to do and all of the things that everybody else is doing, you ask yourself, is that what you want to do? Is that going to lead you to success? And, and whenever I read this verse, this is exactly what comes to my mind. That this is, this is the friend who was saying, come on, man, you can get religious when you're 50 or whatever. Right? You don't need to do it now. You're young. This is what people say. Well, this is what is a scenario that Allah gave us. So this is a very powerful description. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the top looking down and not from those who are at the bottom. Now, when it comes to uh, being from the minority, definitely one of the places that we don't want to be like everybody else is when it comes to the health. So when we look at the average health, or the health of the average American, it's not very good. We lead the, the world in, in diseases, in the industrialized world, and surgeries and all kinds of things. So inshallah, regarding this, uh, I will be here tonight visiting you, and we will be talking, uh, the, the title is called Body and Swole. So it will be regarding Islam and health. So it is for anybody, whether you're trying to get swole, whether you think you're swole, or whether you just want to improve eating habits, or just want to know what does Islam say about diet and eating. You will be, I think it will be very eye-opening to many of us, that it, because it is a complete religion. So inshallah, that will be tonight um, after Isha. Also, a couple of uh, masjid announcements. The I ISCN membership is open for yearly renewal, so you can renew online at coronamuslims.com. Also, the boys and girls youth group sessions are on Friday from 6 to 8. Uh, also, please continue to support the masjid with your generous donations. May Allah reward everyone in abundance. Uh, last time I was here, I was in the other masjid, so mashallah, it's uh, very nice to see. Also, uh, please make dua for all who have uh, passed away, and a special dua for the sick in our community, um, especially a dua for Haseem Sheikh, who suffered a stroke in Canada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت السلاح قد قامت السلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Straighten the line shoulder to shoulder, fill the gaps. The sun 
وإذا الكواكب انتثرت وإذا البحار فجرت وإذا القبور بعثرت علمت نفس ما قدمت وأخرت يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي صورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن عليكم لحافظين كراما كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس نفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله